हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू लैब थ्री विच इज सोर्स रॉक एवेलुएशन ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ दिस लैब इज टू क्लासीफाई एंड और टू एवेलुएट एन ऑर्गेनिक मैटर बेस्ड ऑन जियो केमिकल डेटा आई होप ऑल ऑफ यू हैव गॉन थ्रू योर lecture about source source rock evaluation and hopefully you can now easily understand different steps and different parameters that we will use in this lab for evaluation of source rock okay first of all you have to go through some basic theoretical knowledge like here are different geochemical parameters and i also mentioned their brief description and you can visit your notes you can visit your book or you can visit online literature to dig into these parameters and you can read there in details about these different geochemical parameters for example first of all s1 which is actually the milligrams of hydrocarbon per gram of rock it is also the unit of this particular parameter and from where it is coming it is coming from pyrolysis and as i have already mentioned in my lecture that there are three peaks we obtain from rock pyrolysis and each peak represent a different situation or different scenario for example this s1 actually indicates free hydrocarbon gas or oil in the sample and s1 if greater than 1 mg hydrocarbon per gram of rock may be indicative of an oil these hydrocarbons had already been generated in the sample this is very important point last one you should uh, able to understand what s1 means what its value means these are those hydrocarbon which had already been generated in your sample and next one is s2 and these are the hydrocarbon those result from the cracking of cavity because when you increase the temperature heat your sample and crack the kerogene some hydrocarbon produce those are recorded in the form of s2 peak and second a high molecular weight free hydrocarbon that do not vaporize in the s1 peak so if still there are some free hydrocarbon that had already been generated but did not release in step 1 like in s1 peak and they can also release in second step as well okay and then s3 s3 is an indication of amount of oxygen in the kerogen and is used to calculate the oxygen in and s3 values greater than 200 means they are anomalously high possibly due to high concentration of carbonates that break down at temperature around 390 or less than 390 centigrade okay then fourth parameter is hydrogen index there is a formula or relationship from which you can determine hydrogen index using these peaks and let's go to literature and find the formula for hydrogen index and what actually this parameter is it is normalized hydrocarbon content of a rock sample kerogen type information is derived from this value as type 1 type 2 type 3 based on the results we obtain for hydrogen index we can differentiate different types of kerogens okay then oxygen index is normalized oxygen content of a rock it will represent the presence of carbon dioxide and mostly the type 3 kerogens generally have higher oxygen index than either other types like 1 and 2 
Okay, also some more detail about oxygen index. You can read it and go through it. Hopefully, you will understand. And next parameter is maximum temperature. This is actually the pyrolysis temperature. I may forget to mention in my lecture that there are two types of temperature. One is pyrolysis temperature and one is your subsurface temperature. So these are different temperatures. This Tmax actually we obtain in the lab during testing of your rock sample. For example, when you run pyrolysis on your rock sample, it's you will get this Tmax. And other temperature that we use in burial history curve, we will discuss in our next lab. Okay, Tmax is pyrolysis temperature at which a maximum yield of generated hydrocarbons occurs. Tmax increases with increasing maturation and indicates the indicates the stage of maturation of the organic matter. Uh, we will plot this Tmax as well on the graph, and you will see how by increasing the temperature your types of calogen vary as well as maturation of your organ material is also going to increase okay then the other parameter between right reflectance it is the most commonly used organic maturation indicator used in the industry Following table shows the relation between the VR with the maturity. If the VR is too low, like it's less than 0.5, your organic matter is immature. But if it, if it goes up and falls somewhere in this range, you can say your organic matter is mature. And even if it's more higher, like more than 1.4, mean it is over mature. Uh, for oil and gas, for ideal source rock actually have the um, mature uh, stage and their VR values fall in this range. Okay. Then here is an example of source rock potential. Actually, this table is taken from these author's work you can google it and find the detailed article as well and the purpose of this table here just to give you a basic idea how we uh, differentiate petroleum potential based on toc s1 s2 uh, data as you can see as toc increases and also there is variation in s1 s2 values we differentiate or assess the petroleum potential in the form of poor or excellent or good and there are also some relationship from where you can calculate the bitumen and hydrocarbon ppm this bitumen is again the free hydrocarbon that is actually obtained uh, during s1 peak and based on these geochemical parameters like toc s1 s2 we can assess the potential or quantity of hydrocarbon in the source rock. So this type of interpretation actually I want from you in this lab and you can see below are different plots which can be used in the given data which can be Okay, here is first plot between oxygen index and hydrogen index. Hydrogen index is on y axis and oxygen index is on x axis. And these curves actually these are the standard curves um, for the relationship between hydrogen index and oxygen index. All these dark and also these dash line as well these are all standard curves that you have to plot before putting your data on this graph and there are different techniques how we can generate the standard plot you even you can use coral draw if you don't want to use coral draw then go to do some 
numerical modeling it's not a tough task you just have to establish an equation between hydrogen and and oxygen just based on this curve and just put this equation in excel and excel will plot this curve for you and the easy way if you can digitize this template in coral draw then just plot the curve on the same scale and then put your data on this graph and interpret your data in the form of source rock potential and it is also called uh, called van Krivelin plot and let's dig into it let's see what you can produce and it will also impact your grading as well how much effort you put into these plots will determine your final grade for this particular lab Similarly, here is an other plot. It is actually between depth and vitreous night reflectance. On y-axis, it is depth, and on x-axis, vitreous night reflectance. And it is a logarithmic graph, and these dots actually are your data points that you acquire from lab testing and here are some ranges you can plot these vertical lines on logarithmic graph for each vr value like 0.6 you can plot a solid line then 0 0.9 113 then 2 and even the table provided for vr you can use that table to define a range or zone of mature zone immature zone or over mature zone and then plot your data and interpret Okay, here is another example that is the graph between total organic carbon or TOC and S2 peak and these dots and the triangle are the actually data that was acquired in the laboratory and these are threshold values that threshold lines you can say those help you to assess the potential of your the petroleum potential of your source rock or organic matter which is preserved in source rock and here is a criteria for poor for TOC fall in this range this zone is poor if TOC is in this range up to one your zone will be called fair and then good and excellent and for coal your TOC actually fall in very high zone and for S2, there are different threshold like this zone and it is poor if your S2 fall in this range. Similarly, if S2 increases, as you can observe, there is a, a variation in your assessment as well. So, um, it is not tough to plot this graph, just follow the scale and put the threshold lines and then put your data on this graph for interpretation okay here is your data for interpretation uh, i will just briefly describe this data set and this data set actually is taken from one of published article on of shale source rock and here are different depths from which the samples were collected and here are the major TOC values total organic carbon were measured in the laboratory and here S1, S2, S3 those peaks were say, determined through pyrolysis and the values are given here similarly the Tmax temperature also given here and then oxygen index actually calculated for you but you can also search for the formula what is the relation between oxygen index and these peaks and you can verify these numbers as well and at the end uh, there is also the data of vitreous reflectance here are the number 
and what you have to do you have to play with these numbers to reach some final conclusion about potential of petroleum in your source rock and this shale is your source rock and here are the numbers that actually you got after running the laboratory testing on your samples and all parameters are here guidelines are also have already been explained above and i hope that now you can draw different cross plots and can assess the potential of your source rock for hydrocarbons and here are a couple of important instruction let's try to include all possible plots in addition to above plots for better interpretation of given data and this actually will also impact your grade as well if you put more effort you will see you can generate more good graphs from this given data and similarly all data points should be plotted or overlaid or you should plot all the point don't miss any point and assess the potential of your source rock and in addition to that you can read additional material from google let's google the paralysis data analysis you will find a hundred of examples and you will find also a number of other plots as well how you can plot the data set in different way to assess the potential of your source rock uh, so let's dig into it let's plot some good graphs for getting good marks or good grades in this lab and best of luck uh, this is end of lab 3 thank you and bye